how hard it is? Because I like I know not all dogs are for all people, uh -huh. and I have a lot of energy. But like I really want to snuggle with your dog. What's your dog's name? My dog's name is Bubbles. Bubbles. Yeah, and um, she's very protective of Dada. Oh, my dog Henry is like that. Yeah, she'll yeah. jump at you if okay, you come near Dada. Okay, mine doesn't do that. Okay. Yeah. So Mine we, just kind of growls. We'll keep a little distance yeah. for right now. Keep a little distance. Just a little bit. Warm her up. Get just to know her. my voice. Yeah. The rhythm of Kelly. Well, let's get her comfortable <laughs> with the rhythm of Kelly. Wait, which one does she like more, you or Sophia? Me. I love that. Yeah, it's no like question. A big, giant dude with a little dog. It's so great. She wanted the dog, but the dog wanted me. She was a rescue. So, oh, I love that. you know, Sophia saw a picture of her and was like, oh my gosh, this is the cutest dog ever. She is. So the shelter brought her over. And as soon as she saw me, she came running over. And that was it. And then she started growling at Sophia to go away and growling at the shelter people. I'd never had a pet before. And you were like, we'll take her. I said, well, I never had a pet. I said, you okay. never had said, a pet? how do we do this? Yeah. Not as a kid? No. And then I always traveled and worked so much that it was just, it was ridiculous. I couldn't have a dog. So the, okay. the shelter brought her over. And, um, you know, she actually, it turns out, was sick. She was peeing blood. Oh, no. And it turned out that she had a cyst that they were worried might be cancer. So, you know, Sophia was like, well, why, did, why would they bring a sick dog over without telling us? And I just said, look, you know, if, they, did, if, if, if they told us, yeah. then nobody would ever have the dog over and she'd never get adopted. Yeah. So I just turned to the shelter people and said, look, I'll take her. Whatever happens, Look at that we'll heart of it out. yours. So, that's so cool. Because well, thanks, you but, have but the but means. I, I would encourage people, yeah, and that's the thing is like, luckily she landed with somebody who could, you know, I could pay the medical bills. And yeah. Whatever happened, I was just gonna take care of this little thing and try to help. And, you know, yeah. I try to encourage other people because during COVID, a lot of people went to shelters and got pets. Yeah. And then as soon as the clouds broke and we started going back to normalcy, those people brought the pets back. So there's a huge number of pets that have what been brought back. What kind of been brought back. special I know. place in hell? <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. The nerve to Seriously. walk back in. You walk back in. Imagine you... taking this little thing back. I couldn't imagine. So I mean, I guess I'm glad they brought it back into the shelter and didn't just let it go, I guess. Right. But dang. Yeah, so people I out love there, animals yeah. more than humans. If so. you have the chance, like, adopt, <laughs> adopt a pet. Yeah. If you can. They're out there. They need homes, like, more than ever now. Yeah. So you, it was Sophia's birthday recently, and you bought a very thoughtful gift for her, right? Yeah, I it? did. Uh, so I, you know, I wanted to. You buy, you know, you buy your wife flowers. The flowers die. I wanted to get her flowers that would last forever. Okay. So I enlisted the help of this, Harry Potter, <laughs> <laughs> of this famous glass sculptor named Martin Blank. So a lot of people know the name Dale Chihuly uh, as far as glass sculpting goes. Um, towards the end of, of Dale's career, um, Martin was making a lot of Dale's sculptures for him. Oh, his apprentice plant, basically. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and he's this brilliant glass sculptor that's in Seattle, and he said, hey, um, I'm gonna be finishing up the sculpture, do you wanna come to Seattle, and I'll let you be a part of it, and I'll teach you. Oh, that's so you! I was taught, that, that furnace, that blast furnace is 2,250 degrees, so you have to be very careful with everything, and there's a dance, there's a movement, there's a choreography, I mean, yeah. he was basically like, here are the steps, one, two, three, four, you got it? And it's like, yeah. Okay, you know, like don't let anyone die. Don't okay, die. got it. And you don't die. So So you did the whole thing? I did um yeah, I, I and then I made her a surprise which I was making there, which I won't show what the finished product is. Okay, but, I like you know, that. That's a surprise. That's so nice yeah. though. That's so beautiful. Yeah. yeah it's, it's thoughtful. Yeah, it's and really I wanted to be a part thing. of it so that like I could always be a part of that sculpture. She always let yeah. me know that I made part of it. It's nice too because you can both buy whatever you want to buy. You know what I'm saying? But to make something for someone, it's beautiful. Sure. Yeah. yeah I think that's it. more meaningful. Just saying. Yeah. Um, so Halloween was yesterday. Here is a photo of you and your brother, and I want to show this because what was wrong with you as a child? <laughs> like, well, listen, like, I, my mom was in on it too, he's, okay? He's not the cowboy. <laughs> that's his other, that's no. his brother. Yeah. I, I'm like, that scared the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. So you're into gore? Well, when I was a little kid, yeah. I mean, that's the point no, of Halloween, right? No, no, when you're right? a little kid, no, that's I want an scared. eyeball hanging out. I could detach the eyeball and, you know, put it back in. Yeah. You was... have the greatest mother ever. She's the best. Because she was like, sure, son. And then you went out, like, scaring everyone and God. Yeah. Like, that was, yeah. Well, also, those masks at that time, like, it's just sweat. Like, it's a sweat oh, waterfall yeah, on the inside. Yeah, yeah. 
And it's Pittsburgh, so there's probably snow on the ground I'm there. I'm just saying, like, the effect of the picture <laughs> next to the poor cowboy that's about to get look eaten. At, look at my brother yeah. Nick. How yeah. cute is he? <laughs> I mean, come Howdy on. doody. It's yeah. nice. So wait, what's, what's with this photo as well? Wait, explain this, what's one. this one. What's happening? Oh, yeah. What's happening there? Uh, well, I, I got hit in the face with a baseball bat. Okay. When I was a what? kid. When I was a, when I was a kid. Right around the age of that Halloween picture, I got hit. How do you face. accidentally get hit in the face with a baseball bat? Just asking for a mother of a six-year-old son. Um, you have to be a really stupid kid who's waving a bat around that shouldn't be. Wow, you're my son. Then, okay, yeah. okay, you're, that's my, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, I didn't that's, mean to include no, him in that's that. That's actually um, pretty, that yeah, tracks. Like 35 yeah. years later, you're still dealing with it. So it's, it's Wait, one of so those they things. were like your adult teeth had already come in? Oh yeah. So that's real, so you have to wear like a little thing in. Uh, yeah, these are, oh yeah, this is like a bridge right now because I'm waiting, They're, they have to drill you the go, next screw up into my gums to put the, yeah. Yeah, you go from like sexiest man alive to like Bubba real quick. <laughs> it's like, it's awesome. It's amazing. I saw that picture and I was like, how is that the same dude? <laughs> it's amazing what teeth do. They really do. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. If I was looking yeah. at any other time in history, yeah. it would not be going so well, especially the glasses. <laughs> I would I'd be blind. I'd have no I have teeth. glasses. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see well as well either. Yeah. So you're playing yourself uh, on this season of Mythic Quest. So why do you want to do that? Um, well, other than the fact that you're a huge gamer, so you like games. Well, no, but I, I love Rob. Uh, I love um, you know Sunny in Philadelphia, and and I thought Rob was hilarious. I got to do a movie with Glenn Howard in, and and actually three years ago Rob called me to do Mythic Quest, but and we shot an episode that couldn't air because of COVID, so it was supposed oh. to be like at a convention, and we needed all these extras, and we couldn't do it. So that oh. actually got scrapped, and then they called me back a couple of years later and said come back and. Oh, wow. They actually wrote me something even better. And David Hornsby, who was on the show, he I went to drama school at Carnegie Mellon with him. So oh, wow. and he writes for it and wrote me some great stuff. That's cool. Small world, right? Well, Carnegie Mellon's actually kind of like the entertainment industry is full of a bunch of the kids that I went to drama school with during oh. my year. So it was like me, Matt Bomer from Magic Mike, yeah. Carnegie Mellon, Pablo Schreiber from Halo, Cody DePablo from NCIS. Then you have like Patrick Wilson, Gabriel Mock. This Ramach, is the school to go to for drama. It is. Well, at yeah. the time it was. Um, at the time I went there, it was ranked higher than Juilliard. Oh wow! Oh. What's up, Juilliard? No, uh, what's I, up? <laughs> That's what I said. I said it. I said it. I said what I said. No <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so you're also working on another childhood passion. I love this about you. So you have a Dungeons and Dragons documentary, right? Because I know you have that thing you built at your house. So yeah. So I'm gonna direct the official Dungeons and Dragons 50th anniversary documentary. Like it's a. The complete history I from like starting in 1974. I need to get into this, because I love any kind of, I love, th this just feels like me. Like I saw the whole thing, and I saw a bunch of dudes, whatever, huh? but like, women are cool too, and the we women like. Women didn't play when I was a kid. They I know, were, I know. None. And believe me, it I wasn't because we didn't want it. No, I know, I'm just saying, because you okay. wanted girls around We wanted them to <laughs> listen to us talk about this nerdy stuff. I love nerdy stuff, I think it's so fun, I love escapism. So yeah. like, what, what got you into it as a child? Like what? What did you, what did, ta what did you attach to? As a kid, I loved storytelling. I think that's probably what I am more than anything else. I loved storytelling. Um, I loved writing. I loved, um, you know, character building. For a kid without, you know, a Hollywood budget, it was making your own TV show, making yeah. your own film series. So for me, that was like, are you, you know, are you kidding me? And then I could, the kids would play characters in my show that yeah. I ran every day or every, every week. I think that's so cool. Yeah. I love it. So wait, so have you ever gotten in a physical fight? It can be a subjective <laughs> event, right? So have you ever gotten in a physical fight at D&D? No. At D&D? I mean, when I was a kid, people Wait, or maybe not in D&D. What's happening? <laughs> well, clearly, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've thrown some Bubba comes oh, out. I was, a, I was a bouncer and a bodyguard in college. So, you no, were? Yeah, yeah, oh, wow. yeah. That's a whole other story. Yeah. Yeah, for another time, maybe. Um, for a nighttime show. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, probably. Yes, exactly. Um, but um, no, when I was a kid, you know, people, there was a stigma against it. You know, the churches were burning books. They thought that Satan was possessing their children through wow. the game. That's the reputation that it had. I did not know And that. so the churches were burning books, and then the sales quadrupled because the kids whose books were being burned went and bought more and then hid them better. Yeah, and once you make it a red button, then you just want to press wants it. it. Yeah. As soon as your parents are What's upset, in there? I need that. Yeah. yeah. And so as a kid, there were there was a lot of stigma against it. So there were kids that would say things, and you'd get into almost fights with kids over it. Or yeah. I'd defend other nerdy kids I was friends with. <laughs> I was the captain of the football team, so I was Playing also, Dungeons I was and Dragons, nerd, but, I know, love yeah. it. 
So not necessarily <laughs> that, but sometimes there's arguments that happen when you're playing at the table. People want, they want to tell you how the rules work. And yeah. I'm like, I know the guy who wrote that rule. I was just on the phone with him the other day dropping. talking about <laughs> yeah. some project we're doing together. Yeah. So the rule is the way it is. You need yeah. to listen to me. <laughs> and that's it. I so. love your rule follower. I am too. Yeah. Wait, did you ever come to the football team? Did you ever think about actually doing like professional sports? No. You're like a big dude. So. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of talk, and actually, when I, I, my, the high school theater teacher came to me and said, "Would you please try out?" Because I made my own movies. Yeah. And that kind of led to the people interest. saying you should, you should be an actor. You should try this. And so the, the high school theater teacher said, "Would you please try out for Oklahoma?" And yeah. I said, what do I have to sing and dance? She said, just sing happy birthday. So, you know, it's a Cindy Schreiner, my teacher, and she's kind of responsible, for, you know, in large part for, for pushing me into it. So yeah. I went to the tryout, I sang happy birthday, I did some kind of dance, and then that was it, I forgot about it. A few months later, kids in the hallway were saying, congrats, Joe. And I'm like, for what? And they're like, oh. you got a huge part in the musical. And I went, oh no, you know, I went and looked and at the And you have list. to memorize everything. Well, that was easy. It was. Memorizing was never easy for me. I was in musical theater. It was the hardest thing for uh, me. I can read it like once or twice. I'm not like, I don't retain um, anything really. The pro. <laughs> yeah. It's a hard life with that. Yeah. <laughs> You've I don't retain it on much. your feet, however. With a teleprompter. <laughs> yeah. You've done all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so I, I um, but the, the, the real problem was that I was the captain of the volleyball team and I, had, I was a four year starter. I was a junior Olympian. I mean, the junior Olympic team. Wow. And then I, the musicals in the spring. So. <laughs> You're like Wolverine, you're like up. Hugh Jackman. You're like Wolverine and Music Man. It's like <laughs> awesome. It's like. So all the coaches were really mad. They thought, they told, they, course, they made yeah. a point to tell me how stupid they thought I was and yeah. what a huge mistake I was making and everything that neener, I was throwing neener, away. Neener, neener, coaches. Neener, neener. Um, it worked out. It is, it is a hard choice though. I love sports too. It's a hard choice sometimes. Well, I was an art, but I, I mean, I was, I was more of an artist than anything else. Yeah. So for me to not choose to do that would have been the biggest crime for That's me. So you know, cool. I had to do something I was gonna love. I love that.